let's now discover everything about the custom brushes. If you are following the tutorials from the beginning, you know how to use the pen brush or the pencil brush and other default brushes. But if you click on the custom brush, you can draw, you can do anything. Actually, it's because when you start TV Paint, you don't have any custom brush yet. So how to define a custom brush? To define a custom brush, we will use the cutting tool just here. The cutting tool was presented in a previous tutorial, so don't hesitate to watch the previous tutorial to know more about it. So before using the cutting tool, let's draw something on the screen. Now let's do the cutting tool. And here I have my stamp. So I can stamp the element like this. But actually I can also draw with this shape. And that's the power of the custom brush. Each time you are cutting an element with the cutting tool, automatically it's turned into a custom brush. So it's up to you then to use the cutting tool and the custom brush following your needs. I mean, you can use the cutting tool just to cut um, a photograph or a, a character from a drawing and paste it on another drawing, just as I explained in a previous tutorial. Or you can use the custom brush as the something to draw. So with a custom brush, we also have some drawing modes, just like the one we have seen in the pen brush or the airbrush, they are less numerous, we have less choices. Anyway, there is a specific mode I haven't mentioned in the previous tutorial, it was the alpha diff. The alpha diff try to keep the best alpha level in order to give a different aspect to your brush when you're drawing with it. It's especially useful when you create a brush like um, a watercolor brush. You also may find other options like the size or the G, the G tour, the opacity. So let's lower a little bit the size. And following the size of your brush, sometimes you can have some lag, just yeah, just like this. You know, I drink very fast and I have some lag. Actually, the problem is not the brush itself. It's just the entire thing. The anti-aliasing is necessary uh, when, for example, you cut a drawing, a character or a photograph and you need to rescale it or rotate it. And for so the anti-aliasing, just recalculate the pixel value and the different smooth or different light levels and stuff like this. So if you use the cutting tool to cut drawings or photographs or uh, something like this, then you can use the anti-aliasing smart, best or medium. If you cut an element in order to make a custom brush and paint with this custom brush, I don't advise you to use a smart mode since it may create some lags just here. So use the known mode and then no lags anymore. You can, uh, in order to avoid to always change this mode each time you create a brush, you have the possibility to change uh, this mode directly in the cutting tool, just here. And so each time you'll cut a brush, it will be in known mode. Another option really interesting is the optimize. Optimize will avoid the, um, the empty pixels around your custom brush. Here, for example, I've cut my brush with a lot of empty pixels. And to optimize this, in order to, uh, for example, here we can see I have some not a gap, but there is a, a kind of little step between my cursor and the center of my brush, I can click on Optimize to avoid the problem. And so, to avoid always clicking on Optimize, you can change this parameter here. And each time you'll cut a brush, it will be optimized automatically. The Keep option here will, for example, if you create several brushes and you want always to keep the same uh, options like uh, the size or the opacity level or the angle or anything else, then you can check keep and it will keep the exact same parameters each time you create a new brush. 
only the shape will change. Custom brushes are still sensitive to the papers, as we can see. And there are also other really interesting modes here in the custom brush. We have the warp mode. The warp mode will adapt the size of the brush. So for your very own eyes, the brush will always seems to have the same size. Like this, you know. My size. It'll always have the same uh, size of sense diameter uh, for me. Actually, it's not the case since I'm just zooming and zooming. But it always adapt, uh, adapts itself to the zoom ratio. We also have the projection. And the projection will create a projection of the brush. If the tilt value of my stylus is very, very uh, like this, we can project the brush. So with this kind of brush, it's not really talking, but it's very, very useful to, to make splatter brushes. Other information that may interest you here in the custom brush uh, options, we have the options templates that can be useful if, for example, you have a character on the drawing. And further in the timeline, you would like to retake this character. And of course, this character is among several other people you would just like to take these character, not the other ones. So you can take the cut brush tool like this, go on the new frame, and hit stamp in place to stamp in place the element you have just cut. Uh, if, for example, you have created a brush with a lot of different parameters, you can use reset to reset the different parameters that you have changed. 